Okay, hello, we are back and we are here to continue where we left off in sickness. The sickness demo to be more exact. So, we uh we basically each each chapter has basically gone a day, so this will be day four. Or not actually day four, but it's mo mainly covered a day. This has been mul this has, has advanced multiple days. I think it's been thirteen days that it has advanced from the previous one. Of course, if you want, if you're keeping track, it does say up in the right hand corner the chapter and the what date it is. So it, you know, it's Tuesday, September twentieth. So I, I kind of want to see what happens next. I, I I really have a worry that something is going to happen to his sister or or something. And to tell you the truth, I really don't want that to happen. I I like her. She she's a good character. And I really don't want that. I mean, whether it's his fault or anything, who knows? But. I really don't want to see anything happen to her. I mean, she she seems like a character I would want to, you know, if she was my sister, I would want to protect her myself. I mean, she's she's so nice. Well, let's continue this where we left off here, and we'll continue the story here. This demo has a lot more content than I anticipated it would. Tuesday morning, September 20th. Almost two weeks have passed since... My first day in the life of Marcus, and with every day I've found myself growing more confident and resourceful. We started out doing collections as we done on our first day of work and worked our way up to doing deliveries as well. Apparently some gamblers actually win, even if their luck doesn't last. Since we usually finish around midday, I've been spending my afternoons sparring and training with Andre. Slowly but surely I'm improving. My injuries have lessened with uh, every match and my rate of recovery is at an all-time high. My tailbone no longer feels like it's broken. I'm able to dodge most of my opponent's blows, and I'm barely suffering a single bruise. Well, good for you, man. I mean, uh, let's say you have to hide from your sister. I mean, it sucks that you're hiding this all, you know, general from her, but she, I have a feeling that she's hiding something from you. You know, everybody does have their secrets, whether you want to admit it or not. There, there are things that you, you just don't tell people. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I have my own secrets that I wouldn't tell people. Why? Because they, by telling them, they might tell you. I mean, it's not like it's anything bad, but, you know, certain things that, you know, that might make people think differently of you, that you know, it's none of their business. I mean, it's not affecting your relationship with them. Why should they know? There's no reason for them to. But I think this this situation right here is a little bit different because I think his what he's doing does have an effect on his sister's life or could. Maybe I have what it takes to be a fighter after all. Despite my improvement, it seems I may not need to enter the ring after all. Although there's always a need for more combatants, reliable collectors are apparently far more valuable. As long as I keep doing what I've been doing, Marcus believes our current work will last for many months to come. I will be able to make a comfortable living doing this spickle legal questionable work. Marcus won't need another lackluster cover job and Karasu will have two trustworthy collectors. With our current uh, predicament being what it is, everybody wins. Everybody that is, except for Sarah. I had a feeling. See, except for Sarah. I mean, I, I don't know what she has this in. I mean, you, you doing these dangerous things kind of puts her life in jeopardy that someone wants revenge and they find out you have a sister. They could do things to her. Or even your boss could threaten to do things for her. Or Marcus could threaten. That's the thing. She is not in the best situation, man. As long as you do what you're told... I think things will work out, but you must remember that, man. That the situation you have put yourself in as a murderer, and, you know, they know, people know, and the things you've done already and continue to do, it just keeps stacking up, man. <laughs> they have shit on you. If they really wanted to throw you out, <laughs> they could. Well, I've been growing stronger and more capable every day. Sarah has been doing the opposite. She's definitely hiding something from you, man. I feel it. There's something going on that she does. She's afraid to tell you. She was as happy as ever over the weekend, then became depressed and on edge the second that Monday rolled around. Another week wrote, rolled by and by the same pattern repeated itself. Lately, Sarah has been returning 
with misery so obvious that it pains me to simply look at her, let alone try to once ask, again ask her, what's wrong? Um, somehow you gotta get her trust, man. Somehow. I mean, she clearly cares about you, but there's something, there's a reason why she doesn't tell you. Uh, th there has to be a reason. And that's something you have to figure out and you have to try to change, man. You should definitely put some effort into it. Something. I mean, I, I think she knows that you care, but I really don't, I don't want to see her, man. To suffer, to tell you the truth. She's such a nice girl. Her mental state just continues to degrade and she won't tell me a thing. Yesterday afternoon, Sarah practically broke down the moment I returned. She cried and cried, allowing herself no re reprieve as she silently wept for a reason still unknown. Well, she knows the issue is you don't know. You, you, I think what you gotta do, man, is you gotta explain to her that if, if, if she wants things to get better, she has to open up and so that you understand you can't help show that you care that, you know, if you can help and you're willing to help. As long as you, she has to take the first step, though, that's the problem. She has to take the first step and open up and tell you so that you can help. I clearly, he will help. I, I know that he will, man. He, they're pretty, they're pretty close, brother and sister. I carefully looked her over, noticing no physical injuries of any kind. Her clothes weren't torn, her hair was straight, nothing was amiss. All I could do was offer Sarah a shoulder to cry on as I attempted to console her, holding her tight until I was on the verge of tears myself. I'm Even I'm kind of like, oh, I don't like seeing her cry either. I don't know what's worse, seeing the only loved one I have left in such a state where I'm feeling powerless to do a thing about it. I think both, man, you mean... This morning, the day after her most recent and grandiose episode, Sarah gradually returned to the world of the living brought with it a fresh attitude and renewed spirit. She quickly wiped her eyes and nose, changed into her school uniform, and began making breakfast. Whatever happened yesterday, there was nothing a good night's rest couldn't help rectify. Proceeding with our usual morning routine, Sarah burst off any and all questions I threw at her regarding last night's episode, determined to shut me out of whatever she's going through. Maybe you don't have to ask questions, you just gotta make sure that she continues to know that whatever it is, she can rely on you. That she doesn't need to hide anything from you. If, if whatever it is, you will help her, you'll be there. And of course you're there when, she, when you get home, but you gotta make sure that you, know, you can't help her if she doesn't open up. But I won't let her. Following Sarah's usual departure, I quickly changed into a hooded jacket that I purchased on my way home from work. Oh, I had a, I had a feeling that this is some, one way that he could get to figure out if she's not willing to open. Stalk her. You know, follow her. And I wouldn't put it against him. He cares about her. And, you know, if, if I had someone that I cared about and they weren't being open and I had the time, I might even be willing to do the same thing. Whether she gets mad at me or not, it's the reason I'm doing this is because I care. It's not about not trusting you or anything, it's that I'm worried about you. I stashed in my pockets the knife Marcus gave me and enough money to allow for any necessary expenditures, leaving a second later and taking off in Sarah's direction. Passing after Sarah's shadow, I made it to the bus stop with seconds to spare, boarding a few passengers behind her and making sure to conceal my face. Sarah isn't expecting me to be here, so she obviously won't seek me out, but all it takes is a what single well-timed glance. I wonder what she'd say if she knew her own brother was stalking her. I know this is a bit much, but she isn't giving me any other op any many options here. I agree, man. I have this before before she even you know. I, I think in the last episode I had the same idea. She was not willing to when you they they first inter first introduced that she might there might be something up where she was kind of feeling down. That I had a feeling that maybe stalking her might be something that you might have to do. I mean, if she's not willing to open up. It's sad that you have to you have to come to this, but... Love for her, that's all it is. 
Slowly passing my sister by, I took a seat toward the back of the bus, two seats behind Sarah. I'm a little worried that keeping so close might result in my identity being exposed, but the alternative of being too far away to do anything seems far more off-putting. A few more passengers boarded before the bus set on its usual course. Sarah sat quietly by herself, staring out the window the entire trip, seemingly without a care in the world. She didn't say a word to other passengers or do anything to attract attention, and in return she didn't meet with any conflict to speak of. After what felt like only a few minutes, we reached our destination, extending two flights of stairs as we made our way from the bus to the city's train station. I continued to follow Sarah, but no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't find any reason for her recent depression. Could it be that she's being bullied at school after all? If that were the case, she'd want to change schools, not move houses. But if it isn't the commute, then... As if responding to my doubt, trouble finally emerged. Looks like some dudes. I wonder if these dudes are involved at, or something's gonna happen to them. You know, we know that our, his brother is a killer and has the ability and probably has has improved physically, so he could probably take on two guys easily. If Especially if these dudes aren't, you know, in any fit fashion, you could probably take them both out. And he's armed. He has a knife. Standing between Sarah and the ticket gate were two teenage boys, each one of whom seemed to recognize Sarah the moment they laid eyes on her. And they have some smirks on their face, too. I don't think this is good. And it looks like Sarah has her mouth puffed out a little. I think something's going to go down here. They definitely know each other, and I don't think they're on friendly terms. Likewise, Sarah's expression worsened as they approached her, quickly confirming my suspicions. Are they hitting on her or anything? I mean, they're picking on her, I don't think, especially for how old they probably are, wouldn't be the case. It's more like probably hitting on her, or trying to get her, you know, or, or something like that. Adolescent one. <laughs> well, that's kind of a stupid name. <laughs> Adolescent one. Adolescent 2. Although I was a little too far away to hear what the boys were saying to her, Sarah's expression and demeanor spoke volumes. The duo continued to cut her off whenever Sarah tried to walk away, often standing on either side of her to block her exits. They smirked to themselves whenever she lashed out, laughing while Sarah snorted in disgust. Even without hearing a single word, I knew they were the ones I was after. Well, I guess that would explain why, because if, if they're always there harassing her, I guess that makes sense. I mean, they are clearly harassing her. Whatever the reason is, as far as we know, it's just harassment. It isn't sexual harassment. Well, as, as far as we know, yet. Yeah. But still, either way, it's harassment. It's harassment. And that can definitely, after a while, can, you know, become an emotional thing, I guess, you know. Once our train arrived, the two boys followed Sarah into her chosen carriage. They allowed only a few feet between themselves and Sarah at any point in time, following close behind as she tried to distance herself from them. So they even take the train? Damn. Hey, hey, slow down. What's the rush? Yeah, don't you want to sit with us? Definitely. Eh, definitely some jerks. Hey, keep it down, you two. Oh, there's a police officer. Seizing opportunity at the moment it struck, Sarah sat down next to a police officer, finally granting herself a moment's reprieve from her pursuers. Nicely done, sis. Although the trip itself proved rather peaceful, harassment resumed the moment Sarah reached her destination. Did they go to the same school or something? Or... Something like that? It may only take a few minutes to get into the station to her school, but time isn't the only factor here. Well, the train station had security cameras and the trains were lined with cops and rail staff. The road to her school encompassed little more than side streets and vacant lots. Like at the station, the two teenagers kept their distance on the walk to school. You know if they did anything, if, if I was stalking and I seen anything, I'd, I'd probably fuck up those guys. It was my sister. I'd be like, you fuckers, I'm gonna smash the crap out of you guys. They followed at least 10 meters behind Sarah at all times, allowing them to talk quietly between themselves without giving their target any indication as to what they were up to. With a safe distance between Sarah and her pursuers, I moved close, moved in closer, 
enabling myself to listen in on the conversation duel we're having. You're killing me, man. Why not today? There aren't that many people around. Oh shit, man, what are they talking about? I have a bad... I have a bad... Bad vibe by this conversation here. Sounds like they want to do something to her. I don't like that at all. Just be patient. Her time will come. I have to wait until she's alone, you know. I've been saying that for weeks. When is her time exactly? My question is, her time for what? What are they gonna do? They have something planned. I mean, is it like they better not be planning to fucking rape her? If they did that. I would... And I found out about that, and I wasn't, you know, following her that day that it happened. These would be my first suspects, essentially, essentially, because, you know, if I was the one stalking, and I would kick their asses, even if it wasn't. They deserve every little moment of their ass kicking. <laughs> and with this guy, he'd probably actually kill them, because, you know, he already killed someone. <laughs> and he's done some other terrible things, and he <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. This, this guy, I think, wouldn't have a problem with killing someone, even though, you know, he's already done it, and... I don't think you would have an issue with that. God says so, my friend. Just stay calm. Getting desperate is the first step towards getting caught. Well, I suppose you would know. But shouldn't an ex-con like you have a bigger sex drive? Why does it feel like I'm the only one into it today? Definitely, I'm getting the vibe that they want a fucking raper. You're just too focused on that silver girl. You need to diversify your plate. Palette. Not plate, but palette. Taste a couple of other girls first to whet your appetite, you know? As I listened to what the two were discussing, I could feel a familiar surge from the bottom of my stomach. I clenched my fist so tight that I could feel my own pulse, utilizing every fiber of self-controls at my disposal in order to keep my fist by my sides. I know I need to remain calm, but my blood is already boiling. The mere thought of what they're alluding to is driving me absolutely livid. I can understand, man. And I wouldn't put it past you, whatever you did. Whether it's right or wrong is a different question, but because, but I also wouldn't fault you for coming to the conclusion what you possibly would come to the conclusion of doing. Sarah's been mere feet away from those two cretins for weeks now brain broken down mentally until the point of tears and they're laughing and snickering about what they have planned for her. If I don't step in, if I didn't tell Sarah at all, I can only imagine how long it would take before. No, don't even think like that. Don't think like that, man. What matters is that I am here. That this will all end today. Shit, man, he definitely plans on doing something. One way or another, Sarah neared the end of her short walk. She practically sprinted through the school gates and joined the safety her school provided. With other students mulling around in front of the school and hundreds more within, she was soon among friends safe from the clutches of her stalkers. Bye-bye. See you after school. Shit, man, they, they harass her after school, too? Man, these fuckers. Those dirtbags. They really are laying it on thick. No wonder she is coming home crying and shit. Probably scared. She, she only knew, had the idea of what these two might actually be willing to do. And it seems like one of them might not be this first time. He might have. That's ex con, so he's either done something similar like this before or something else. Between the. the Decretion they've shown thus far and the false familiarity they exclude. It's no wonder Sarah hasn't managed to shake them off. It's not a rare sight seeing teenagers hit on one another or breach the personal space of others. As long as they don't step too far out of line, random passerbys would think nothing of it. If their intentions didn't make me want to throw up, I might actually praise how much thought they put into this. Well, they've, they've definitely, I think they've had some experience. This one thing, that's for certain. They've done this probably multiple times. And I'd be surprised if at least one of them, one of them definitely seems really experienced. So, ready to intercept the next train? Or are we?
always fewer passengers on the late trains, and the students are in too much of a hurry to notice yet. They train molesters, too? Sounds like a plan to me. No argument here. Heading back on a slightly different route, I soon found myself watching the duel from afar, giving myself enough cover to prevent the two from noticing my presence. I took the time to make myself room between some bushes in the side of a nearby house, setting in for longer than I would have liked as I watched over my targets. Although watching and waiting isn't a skill of mine, is which I have, come, I have much faith, it does give me time to cool off, offering much needed shade and breathing room. I need to think a little bit more as well. I doubt he's going to let this off, because he knows that something might happen to his sister. It's hard. I mean, how, how would you explain this? Or you would either have to continue stalking and kind of be trying to be her guardian angel. Or you would either have to beat the shit out of these two. And as I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually killed them both. Or somehow tell your, tell your, uh, you know, your sister that you followed him, you've seen everything that happened, and said that these two aren't good, and they're probably going to do something to you, and that you're really worried. But then, you, you don't know, maybe she won't, you might even ruin your relationship with her that way. I, I, I just, I have no idea, but this guy's not going to let this go off. I don't, I highly doubt it. The moment I tried to call myself, I once again felt that same sickening feeling in my chest. What on earth was I thinking? How could I possibly calm down, knowing what those two are doing? How can I just sit and wait while those two go about their lives, preparing to grab another victim? How can I let people like them roam the streets, preying on innocent young girls? Scum like that don't deserve to live, much less breathe the same air as my sister. They could both die tomorrow and the world would be a better place. Definitely sick people. Better yet, they could die today. Ten minutes of agony later, another train came along, carrying with it several unsuspecting targets. Even from my post shrugged from foliage, I could either make out every movement of my targets and, more importantly, their next victim. I, a slender, timid-looking girl, probably a year younger than Sarah and I. There? Man, these fuckers are stonking multiple girls. Man, they they definitely need some. They need to be caught. Him, he's 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 gonna be his little vigilante. I think doesn't always mean it's right to kill someone, but wearing the same uniform and had a similar build to Sarah, but her demeanor and attitude seemed more naive and carefree. A pretty young girl who'd make too perfect a victim. No sooner had I made my guess than the duel began stalking their prey. The target was too much of a rush for the same level of caution to be necessary, unaware that she was even being followed. They tailed the girl closely, roughly matching her pace until the three passed by an empty dead end street. Now! Shit! We fruck? Oh, this seems more than just. This seems like they're fucking. Gonna fucking rape her? <clears throat> hey, hold her legs properly. Shut up and gag her. One teen covered the girl's mouth with cloth, he had been concealing in his pocket while the other grabbed her legs. Taking advantage of her shock, the duo immediately carried toward the empty street, picking a house on the corner they presumed knew to be empty ahead of time. The girl was scared stiff. But once the initial shock wore off, she began flailing wildly. Hey, you picked a feisty one today. They've done this before? Fuck, man. They definitely need to be uh, caught. Whereas this dude will probably do. Fucking kill him. Of course, energetic girls are the best, don't you think? No argument there. That's a decrepit house, man. Definitely abandoned. <laughs> I followed the three as inconspicuously as I could, used like neighbor's yard instead of risking being seen on the side of the road. Climbing up the fence of the house in question, I leaned across and grabbed under the railing of the house back veranda, pulling myself to the dilapidated building and quietly entering from the back. I slowly walked from room to room, watching my back every step of the way. Tiptoeing, I remained vigilant not to make a sound, proceeding with caution until I found my own targets. 
Yeah, man. Whatever you do, man, sh she is going to be a witness to this. And whether the issue is if you kill these fuckers here, are you going to let her go? Or are you going to fucking kill her as well? Because I, I, she's going to know. That's the thing. You trust her, even though you, you know, saved her from this. But you, I have a villain. That's what he's probably going to do. Freaking kill. Jeez, quit struggling, would you? You know it won't do any good. You tell her, bud. Pretty woman, never listen. The time I found the duel, one was already holding the girl down, sitting on her stomach and pinning both of her arms down with his own. His weight appeared to be more than enough to restrain the girl, making the job easier than he dared hope. In her mouth was the same cloth that had been used to gag her until the initial gar grab now kept in place by the use of duct tape. Oh man, they recorded this shit too? Fuck. Uh, the guy has like freaking a uh, camera, it looks like. Alright, almost done. About time, let's get this show on the road already. Fuck, man. Damn, I, even I want to fucking beat the shit out of these fuckers. That's some sick shit, man. Well, the first team prevented their prey from escaping, the other emerged from the next room, bringing with them a video camera and a stack of condoms. Yep, they're in a fucking raper. You don't bring out a stack of condoms for no reason. You know, these fuckers are gonna rape this girl. By now, the frightened girl knew exactly what they were planning. I mean, yeah, you see fucking condoms, you know what they're gonna fucking do. Sobbing silently as she continued to flail and attempt to regain her freedom. Come on, hurry it up already. Take too long and I'll start without you, you know. Calm down, we have all the time in the world. Let's just enjoy ourselves, yeah? Well, the dominant member of the duel set up his tripod and camcorder. And I slowly edged my way to the next room, removing my, from my pocket the knife I intended as using as a last resort. Dude, man, you gotta make a choice here. You're either gonna sit here and Try to do it before they get the act started, or do them while they're doing the act, or after the act. Your choice, man. You can you can be this girl. It, it's all about the diamond. You're either going to let this girl get fucking raped, or you're gonna stop it. That's that's pretty much what it comes down to. Whether he really gives a shit about her is a totally different thing. He might not care, have a care in the world. He cares more about his sister and the reason that's why he's here. Well, he did say he, you know, didn't really want the other people as well. I guess. The other girls, but shit, man. No one deserves to get raped. Biding my time and slowing my breath, I try to get a hold of my nerves, clutching my blade tightly as I near the dominant young man. Despite my on the job training over the last few weeks, I found myself shaking in both fear and anticipation, afraid to use the blue blade in my hand, yet compelled to put the two criminals in their place. I could see myself attacking them, beating the duel into submission, making them pay for victimizing a young girl like this. But when it came to actually use the knife in my hand, I froze. Damn, man. Throughout the many violent encounters I had started and ended over the years, not once had I used a weapon. I had never done something as cowardly as sneaking up on someone and stabbing them in the back or bringing a knife to a fist fight. Even when I killed my previous boss, Mr. Mundo, I had done so with my bare hands, killing him by accident as things got out of control. So when I tried to use the blade in my hand to attack the scum in front of me, to give them what they had coming, I realized that I... were a coward. Yes, I am a coward. I know what I need to do. I know how to make this situation all better. So why? Why can't I move? Weak. It's because I'm weak, isn't it? I don't... I have the strength to help that girl. You know, if only you, man, it's, you know, if you had a cell phone, smartphone, you could turn off the flash, take pictures of this, go to the fucking cops and call them. That's, that's the thing, why doesn't he, well, I guess he doesn't have money. I guess that might make sense, but damn, it's like, who doesn't freaking have a cell phone? You don't need flash on a cell phone, you don't need noise to be made. You could sit there, be taking pictures, get the hell out, even if you can't save her. You'll have proof that something went down here, and you could go to the cops, call them, 
hide out, tell them where you're located, and that someone's getting raped. This dude needs to invest in a, in a cell phone. Helping complete strangers is a job for the police. I have no business with that girl to begin with. But you can be a good citizen. And, you, and at least notify the police. That's one thing you can do. But with his background of him committing crime, that might not be the best idea in his mind, though. Because he's done something wrong, and getting involved with the police might not be the best thing, you know. <laughs> Why am I even here? Why did I come here today? You're here because you're worried about your sister, man. I feel you gotta do something, man. If, if you don't do something now and you're, you're, you are a coward, your sister is going to be next. That girl's just some random person I've never even met before. Her well-being is not my problem. But these two guys, the issue is, dude, you let them go. Nothing happens to them. Your sister is going to be the next target. Or one of the next targets. If they were Sarah, and if it were Sarah... Sarah. No. If that had been Sarah in there. If that had been Sarah. There. The perfect angle. Ready for your debut, little miss? Oh shit, man. He, he just... He just had to think of his sister there. That brought up his courage. To do it. Just frickin' sliced one of those fuckers. Adolescent number two, it looks like. Interrupted mid-sentence the teen. Eyes shot wide open as pain unlike anything he'd ever felt before permeated throughout his body. Protruding from his stomach was the tip of the knife, taken with it bone and cartilage from his spine. Shit, man. How big is the freaking knife you got? Before he could so much as wipe off the blood dripping from his mouth, the teen's legs buckled and forced him to the floor, refusing to move no matter how much he willed them so. What, what the fuck? With the first youth disposed of, I swiftly embraced his partner, grabbing the teen by his throat and dragging him off the petrified girl beneath. Allergic to my presence by his partner's groan, my second target tried to fight back, nailing one of the remaining bruises on my stomach on his first shot. But with adrenaline and anger feeling my every action, the pain didn't even register. I removed my hand from his throat and gripped him by the hair, exposing his throat for the obvious next step. You're gonna slut it, aren't you? Yep. And look at that smirk on his face, too. Oh, shit, man. Even though he said he doesn't have the courage, he definitely has the will to kill, though. And I think he gets a little bit of an enjoyment out of it. Or an, an adrenaline rush from doing it. The question is, how is the young girl going to react to this? That is the major issue we have here. You helped her, but that doesn't mean that you're scot-free, that she won't, would not be willing to say something to the police or something, anything. I mean, you, you stopped them from raping her. I'll, I'll give you props to that. You, you, you got rid. You took these guys out before they did the deed, instead of after or during. The moment my hand left his throat, my knife took its place. I cut quickly and deeply, paying no heed to the blood spraying out of my hand. The young man desperately grabbed his throat, trying to stop the bleeding from by any means necessary. Both, both of his hands occupied. Any defense he could have offered was rendered moot. Seizing the opportunity, I focused on the back of my prey's neck and, at last, you cut the back of his neck too? Damn, he's going all out to kill him. It was over. As my second victim fell to the floor in a bloody heap, I slowly walked away, careful not to step in his pooling remains. But as I looked down at my hands, a familiar feeling of shock and horror set in, driving me to an unwelcomed realization. It happened again. I had been overwhelmed by bloodlust a moment ago, but the second my prey hit the floor, I realized that what I had done. My hand shook and I could hear my ragged breathing. Before me was a corpse, a deceased human being human being I had killed. Just like with Mundo, I lost myself in the moment, forgetting all about the situation at hand and thinking only about my target. No, this this is much worse. Mr. Mundo was an accident and I slammed his head against the table during our fight, never intended to actually kill him. This 
was a totally different, that is, that is correct, it was a totally different situation. I mean, I you could possibly get away with it stating because she's the only victim that you tried to save her and other stuff like that. But more than likely, you would, wouldn't get off scot-free. You know, it would suck for your sister, and she, how is she going to supposed to get by? That, that was something. But this time, I knew exactly what I was doing. I knew, and yet I... Now, for this situation, man, I don't, I don't hold this. This one I wouldn't hold personally against you if I knew you did this. It was two awful men, and my personal opinion is, I, you killed them, and I, in my opinion, they got what was coming to them. I mean, I understand the the idea of you know you shouldn't really kill someone, but if I knew someone did this, and they were two awful men. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go like, you're a freaking killer, stay away from me. No, don't come any closer. Nah, I wouldn't think that. I'd be, be like, damn. You did what you could, and that's how it ended. As I stared at my bloody hands, I noticed subtle movement out of the corner of my eye. The girl I'd sought to save had her back against the wall, no doubt in shock, shock and terrified by everything that had happened since her line from the train. She looked at me with unbridled, unbridled fear in her eyes. I view I repaid with a calm smile. Look at that frightened girl. I remembered where I was and why I had gone to such extremes. I didn't set out to kill anyone today. I came here to protect Sarah. To protect girls like this one from those fiends. My methods may have been contemptible, but even so, I had my reasons. I removed the tape from the frightened girl's mouth with my bloody hands, meeting with far less resistance than I thought I would. Whether paralyzed by fear or simply smart enough not to provoke a murderer, the girl remained frozen, allowing me to cut the tape behind her hands. I guess that's it for me. Those two won't be going anywhere and the girl is free to move as she pleases. My work here is... Hmm? Just as I turned to leave, I felt my leg snag on something. When I spun back around, I found it was the arm of the girl I had just helped tightly cling to my pants. Her gaze was locked onto my own pupils, no longer showing the fear I had witnessed moments ago. Maybe she'll say thank you. I mean, it, it, she hasn't said anything. That's the big question. I suppose that's for the best. If she's lucid enough to differentiate between friend and foal, then I should be able to leave her without worrying. I removed the girl's arm from my leg and turned once again to walk away. Well, they, she, they didn't seem to say anything. I mean, she, apparently he left without a word being said. She didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. Did all that. Killed it. The only thing you have to hold for, man, is that she... She's definitely probably going to go to the place and they're going to find those dead bodies and stuff like that. It's only, it's only a logical conclusion to that situation. And then she's probably going to say that someone killed him and helped him and just ran off. But the police are definitely going to be on the lookout. And they're probably going to ask her to, you know, give a description of you. And hopefully... Your hooded, you know, look doesn't give away too much of your look because, yeah, whether you whether you killed someone in defense or it, to save someone, you still killed someone, and depending on how the law, the law looks at it, you could still get in trouble. That's the issue. You may have had good intentions, which I think he had good intentions. I felt he had good intentions, and I wouldn't personally if I had to put anything in put anything against him, well, of course, knowing that he killed the first person uh, would be a whole different story. I would definitely put that one against him. Whether it was an accident or not, he still um, approached that violently. And I don't think the boss in person deserved that type of thing. Emptying the contents of my stomach into the bathroom sink, I washed my mouth out for the ninth time as I tried to call, clean myself off. 
For all my efforts, the sink now reeks of bile and stomach acid, not to mention whatever remains of breakfast. I managed to keep my composure at the scene and even on my way home, but the moment I entered the front door, my stomach took a turn for the worse. Being in the diminishing adrenaline, the overwhelming scent of blood, or the sheer gravity of what I've done, my body is now paying the price. I sped up the last of my breakfast and hung my head over the sink, closing my eyes as I thought back over what had happened. Can't change it now, man. You've already done it and they're dead. I believe in that girl's side. I used my hooded jacket to wipe the blood off my knife. I exited the same way I entered, jumping over neighbor fences until I reached the road, then casually walking away from the house. Once I put some distance between myself and the crime scene, I then ditched a conspicuous article of clothing in a storm drain and kept the clean weapon tucked under my shirt. As for my gloves... Oh no. I wasn't wearing gloves from the beginning, was I? I didn't think I needed them, so I never bothered buying any. Weapons seemed like an obvious purchase for someone in my new line of work, but gloves? My fingerprints will be in several places around the house, not to mention on my second victim. Luckily, my fingerprints aren't on file as far as I know, but any possible evidence is bad news. Well, good for you, man, but I don't have the same luxury. My fingerprints are on file. Not for a criminal-based thing, but because for a little while, I did security. And they fingerprint you. And even with all my fingerprints being present, there's still the matter of that girl. On my face, she has a piece of tape with my bloody thumbprint on it. She can place me at the scene of the crime. But will she? That's the big question, man. Yeah, will she? When I left, that girl seemed to realize that I meant her no harm. I, I agree with that. She, I think she did as well. Otherwise, she wouldn't have grabbed your leg like that. If anything, I helped her out of a bind, so... Shouldn't she do the same? Well, you would think that, but you know she's got to come up with some sort of answer if she goes to the place. Even if she does play along, the fact is that I'm in serious trouble now. My job is both dangerous and criminal. I've killed three people, and yet another person now has the power to put me behind bars. If I'm not careful, my work might just start to follow me home. And that isn't a good thing. Finally, prying myself away from the sink, I eventually managed to settle my stomach and get a gripe. I realized that worrying about worrying wouldn't do any good and that I could only wait and see. For the time being, the matter was out of my hands. As I attempted to restore some sense of nor normality to my day, my mind turned back to work. My collecting gig with Marcus. With our usual meeting time having come and gone, it was already too late for me to head out. Even if I left, I wouldn't have any clue where to go since our destinations were towed to Marcus directly. What a blunder. I killed two people, left ev evidence, and a witness at the scene, and now I'm skipping work with my crime lord boss expects me to complete. Today really couldn't have gone any worse, could it? Oh well. No use worrying about it now. If Marcus wants me, he knows where to find me. Right now, I just need to take it easy. I'll relax on the couch, watch some television, and do my best to escape from this awful re reality I seem to be living. Clutching the remote control in my hand, I began flipping through the channels until I found one playing cartoons. Currently playing was a kids program aimed at children eight and under, suitable for all ages. Now, this is what I'm talking about. What better way is there to escape from the blood and shed taking over my life? After the first cartoon finished, I changed to a different channel. Trying my luck while well, the commercials continued to play between shows. Unfortunately, only one channel seemed to be playing cartoons. There were dozens of reality TV shows, a few news programs, but nothing else, nothing close to the light-hearted entertainment I was after. And during the regular day, I don't think there's much on TV. I haven't had cable in years, so I have no, f no idea what the hell's on television, and I could care less. <laughs> I've left that behind. It's probably been... it's been 10 years, yeah. The last time I've had cable was in 2005. I haven't had cable television or any of that shit since that. I've cut the cord for 10 years. I, I'm totally fine with that. I kept flipping through channels until I rested on a morning news programming, sighing deeply as I resided myself to learning about the real world after all. 
As much as I wanted to escape reality for a while, sensationalist news stories can't possibly be as confronting as my new job, let alone my morning. I sat through a few minutes of puff pieces before flipping back to the cartoon channel I was on previously. As luck would have it, however, what followed the cartoon was a live-action kid show instead. Kids no older than 12, sitting in a fake classroom and playing on smartphones. How stimulating. This is what kids watch nowadays. How I just feel old. What's so interesting about watching preteens bond over how difficult their little lives are? Oh, you ran out of credit on your prepaid plan. You're practically a third role orphan. What are your parents thinking, trying to teach you moderation? You're practically Nazis. Your teacher assigned you difficult homework. You poor thing. What am I doing? I need to calm down already. Ranting about this shit isn't going to do me any good. There are things I need to do, and none of them involve watching worthless trash like this. Looking the channels back over the news, the morning news, I head into the bathroom once more, choosing to focus on cleaning up after myself. It would be rather filthy of me to leave the bathroom smelling like vomit, not to mention downright careless. I can't risk having Sarah learn about what happened here today, or about anything I did today, or about anything you've done previously, man. I mean, sooner or later, if your moment does come, you might have to tell her, man, and and then that's something you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do. With that in mind, I quickly scrubbed the sink clean and then turned my attention to my clothes. Although the hooded jumper I threw away I absorbed most of the damage, my shirt still smells pretty bad, and it can't be that hard to do the laundry, right? Okay, motion machines appears to be on. Now what? Do I just throw the clothes in there, or do I need to do something to them first? You've never done the laundry, man? <laughs> and for that matter, where's the laundry? Is there a basket of clothes around here somewhere? Okay, maybe I should start with something I actually know how to do. I'm no chef, but surely even I can make a proper meal, now that we have actual ingredients. Sarah's been doing all the cooking lately. It's about time I made something for her instead. Now, what to make, what to make. We still have some chicken, eggs, tomato. Okay, I guess I'll make... Instant noodles. <laughs> Good lord, I'm pathetic. Now we turn to local news. As I pulled a packet of instant noodles out of the cupboard, I heard the television from the next room. I guess this isn't so bad. I suppose it's kind of cool that I can listen to the news while I cook. I almost feel like a stay-at-home dad or a house husband. Earlier this morning, two fugitives were found in critical condition in an abandoned house. Critical condition? You didn't finish the job. Shit. Shit. Oh, shit, man. This isn't good. He didn't make sure they are freaking dead. Now, I don't know if they saw his face. One might have. The other one, I highly doubt, did. One of them most definitely did, and then you got the girl. And Either way, they're not getting out of this, because the girl's probably there and probably told them that these two were going to fucking rape her. And they're not, I don't, I, but someone, oh, shit, man. Oh, oh, man. You didn't make sure these guys were dead. You may have heard him bad, but um, the girl must have gotten police help s soon enough, that quick enough that, uh, yeah, these guys didn't bleed out. Even though you freaking cut that guy's neck uh, twice, yeah, you didn't do enough damage, man. I ran back into the living room and hastily clamored for the remote control. I increased the volume and leaned forward, nervously watching the screen. The older of the two, who was released from a juvenile detention center six months ago, was found with his spine severed just above the lumbar. He was rushed to hospital in an attempt to minimize damages, but at this stage it appears as though he will never walk again. Alright, so he's paralyzed. So, he survived after all. Maybe it was only one person. Whether I should feel relieved or anxious about that, the end result is that he won't be able to hurt anyone else. I'd call that a victory. Maybe daytime television isn't so bad after all. The younger of the two, an offender whom police had previously been unable to attach a name to, was found with his throat slashed. Police believe that the young man bled out within minutes and died at the scene. Okay, I had a feeling that, well, how the hell did that guy? I mean, he 
He did more damage to that. The other person was a little different story. Died at the scene, huh? The older of the two is still yet to wake up, and police have been unable to confirm the identity of the assailant. Given that his wound appears to have been dealt from behind, whoever police... However, please do not expect a positive identification. Well, hooray for me. What about the girl? I may not be able to clean clothes or cook real food, but at least I can blindly commit and get away with horrific crimes. That's something, I guess. One witness is currently in police custody, but due to their age, police refuse to disclose the person's identity. Given the proximity of the crime scene in regards to a nearby high school, we believe that... He, did he just turn it off? A witness, huh? I have no doubts regarding the identity of this witness. The question is, will she talk? They did use the term witness, meaning they know she saw something, but she wouldn't rat me out, would she? That's the big question, dude. But the question is, are you just going to let her be and let this whole thing go and just hope that nothing happens, or are you going to freaking try to kill her? That's the big question, because we know this guy's a killer. He, he's willing to kill, and I have no doubt that he's going to continue. You're deluding yourself. Is it really so far-fetched? I helped her. She helps me. That's how it works, right? That's not how it always goes, though. So. Just because you help someone doesn't mean they're going to help you. Right? And you don't need to kill her. She, she did nothing wrong. But whether she turns you in or not, you got to accept it. You have to learn to accept some things that you've done. You've done something, you tried to help her, and I think she knows that enough. And yes, I know I'm right. There's no need to fret over this. Or to worry about what might happen. I've done nothing wrong. Uh, and that can be argued, I think. Desperate to distract myself, I showed up at Andre's gym at noon on the dot, soon meeting up with my usual sparring partners. In addition to Andre teaching me grappling, Marcus had drafted a couple of boxers interested in teaching a new recruit the basics. I'd only engaged in a few sessions with each of them, since I'm currently receiving training every second of or third day, but we quickly warmed up to another nonetheless. And I agreed to the trio, received my training gear, quickly changing and joined them ringside. Since they spend most of their time at the gym, at least from what I gathered, nobody here should have heard a word of my earlier exploits. Moreover, since Marcus is yet to arrive himself, my absence from work this morning should be unknown to those present. Thinking those optimistic thoughts, my training for the day began. My training followed the same motions as ever. Andre and I tried to knock one another to the floor, after which point we each attempted to make the other tap out. After half an hour or so of uncoordinated grappling, Andre explained in detail how to perform specific holds and breaks while demonstrating on my body, thereafter asking would I mimic what he should show he showed me. Partway through today's uncoordinated grappling, however, we were interrupted by an unusual sight. Jesus Christ, what the hell happened to you? She means all bloodied. Nice to meet you too, buddy. I don't suppose you've got a spare medical kits lying around. Yeah, yeah, sit down a minute. We'll take care of you. Andre motioned for the two boxers to help Marcus into the next room, presuming to begin patching him up. Their footsteps slowly became inaudible, leaving just Andre and I outside the ring. That's what happens when your partner's side skip work. How did you... The two of you always arrive together. The one day you don't, he walks in covered in injuries. It doesn't take a genius, genius to figure out. I haven't been coming here long, but Andre's right. Whenever I do show up, Marcus is right by my side. As for his other point, however, I know I should have been there, but he's been collecting since, I, since before I showed up, right? When we went out, I didn't even seem like he needed a partner. Yes, well... Before you showed up, I was the one making collections. Marcus was the one supporting me. He wanted to prove that he has what it takes, so I let him take the lead as long as he agreed to bring you with him. You aren't the only one who's still in training, you know. Damn it. I thought Marcus could take care of himself, but it turns out I was paired with him for more than just my own training. Now, because I forced him to fend for himself in an extremely risky job, Marcus is in need of medical attention. I didn't think for a second about his safety when I ditched work this morning. I thought that he might get injured and never even registered. And yet, thanks to my negligence, he could have been. 
Well, no use worrying about that now. What's done is done. I just hope you're up to the challenge. The challenge? Don't play dumb. You know what I'm talking about. With Marcus in that state, he won't be able to take the lead for a while. Someone else will have to take over. Shit, man. <laughs> I think he's implying you, man. That means your job just got riskier. And, whew, you might end up killing a couple other people. For... So, unless you've stumbled upon another source of revenue since we last spoke, you better hope you're up to the task. After leaving the gym a little earlier than usual, I slowly made my way back home. I thought about everything that had happened since I woke up, the rapid, unforeseen events that threw my day into chaos. To begin with, I stalked my sister, who had been acting abnormally lately, and discovered the reason for her melancholy. I then watched a girl get abducted, and consequently killed and paralyzed her would-be rapist. I skipped work, the price for which was paid by my partner, who was badly injured. Last but not least, I was promoted to lead collector, despite being on the job for a mere two weeks. But even as I mulled over the bizarre day I had, I didn't regret my actions. I considered my deeds to be idiotic and impulsive, sure, but I did not regret them. Marcus knew the risks, and the two I attacked deserved far worse. Those three will receive no pity for me. The only one who suffered needlessly today was the girl I freed, and her situation would have been far worse if I hadn't showed up. That is pretty much true. She would have been freaking raped. And that probably would have scarred her for the rest of her life. I think, I think getting raped probably would have been worse than watching two people die in front of her. Probably would have been scarred her more. Either way, I think she's scarred nonetheless. Getting abducted like that, and almost raped, and seeing two people die. I think that's still going to have an effect on her. And yet, despite that being the logical conclusion, why do I feel so bad? I guess because you're human. You, you must still have some sort of emotion. You're not emotionless. You still know the difference between right and wrong and all that other stuff. You still have some sort of idea of it. Forget it. There's no point thinking about this any further. I just want today to end already. As I walk through the kitchen, what it made you was a sight I sorely needed to see. Oh, she's in a nice little white dress. Ah, you're back early. Today just keeps on getting better. Stumbling out of the living room with Sarah, as lively and elated as I've ever seen her. As if her tone and demeanor weren't enough, her clothing spoke volumes about her mental state. Sarah was always disliked wearing dresses and skirts. In fact, it took her years before she finally stopped wearing my pants to school and actually tried on a skirt. But when she's this happy, even her unfounded body issues won't stop her from showing off. Good evening, dear sister. You seem to be in a good mood. And for that, I am internally grateful. Hearing about my exploits and seeing Marcus's sorry state shook me, but if that's what it takes to see Sarah as happy, then i do it again in a heartbeat. Man, you really do care about your sister, man. He'd kill for his sister, and he's done it. He's, he's willing to kill for his sister. He's willing to kill for his sister, he's willing to do shit, for a whole bunch of shit for his sister. I think that's one of the things that's holding his sanity, I think. I don't think he really has any other... When you look at it... What other reasons does he have to live in this world? It seems like his sister is his his main his main thing. You could almost be like they're freaking married or something to a point. That's why I said, you know, I, I think I brought up in I don't know if it was the last episode or episode or one of the previous ones, I was like incest. I doubt they're gonna have that type of relationship. Um but it's more of the brocon, siscon type of relationship, not the incest category. They're not gonna get all close and start kissing and shit like that. I don't feel that's gonna happen. I don't. It doesn't seem like the character set up for that, or where this type of approach is gonna be happening for that type of situation. It just seems like they're two characters that are brother and sister that really care about each other, and that it's they're you know his, part of one of the major parts of his life and his world is his sister. In the same thing for her. How could I not be? Didn't you hear? There was an assault near my school earlier today. She found out about that already? Wait, 
forget about that. She's excited that there was an assault? I'm gonna play along. Yeah, I saw something about that on the news earlier. Two criminals, apparently one who was crippled for life and the other one died. That's not all! The police found a camcorder that the victims were using to tape their crimes. The one who survived is going straight to jail. Oh shit, the camcorder might have been recording. Shit! Oh crap! I didn't think about that. He'll never be able to hurt anyone ever again. It's a little scary how happily she said that. Or so I'd think if I didn't know what her encounters with them had been like. I was a little shaken up when I thought that I killed the two of them, and when I learned that I really had killed the younger one, but now I'm just sorry that I didn't take care of them sooner. Come like that deserves far worse. Ah, that's great. Did they say what kind of stuff had been recorded on the video? Like their attacker's face, for example? No sooner had the words left my mouth than Sarah's expressions stiffened. Thinking about their crimes they had recorded was enough to put a temporary damper on her mood. Th they... The two of them were abducting schoolgirls and... Raping them. I wonder how many. That's what I want to know. I wonder if they just said how many. Oh, fuck me. Why did I have to go and say that? That's obviously not something Sarah wants to think about. Oh, oh, I, I see. In that case, the other one probably won't survive for very long. Prisoners don't take kindly to those who prey on underage victims, you know. <laughs> What's so funny? Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Thanks for trying to cheer me up. Well, I'd rather have her laughing with me than at, laughing wi with me than at me. But whatever works, I guess. Uh, that's right. As it turns out, the police have a girl from the grade beneath me in protective custody. And apparently, they're worried that the person responsible for the attack will come back and finish her off. That's ridiculous. Well, hopefully that is ridiculous, man. I really don't think she deserves to die. She is an innocent. She has n she has zero reason to be dead. Whether she turns you in or not, or gives a good exam description of you, she, whether that happens or not, she has, in my opinion, no reason for you to go after her. Zero. You have no reason to kill her. It is very selfish if you do. If I wanted to hurt her, I would have already done so. I think it's stupid. I mean, if the attacker wanted to hurt her, wouldn't they have done so at the time of the attack? Hmm. Maybe Sarah and I are more alike than I thought. I already found it weird that Sarah was agreeing with the actions of a criminal. Now she's thinking like one too. I can understand the two of us sharing similar thought patterns. We're twins after all, and we've lived together our entire lives, but when it comes to topics like crime... Honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen Sarah actually get excited over assault and murder. She's always considered them ghastly acts. Ones which she used to complain about when I was so much as watched them on television. So, for the same gentle girl to now be happy about the death and crippling of two young men. So, oh, what kind of person do you think the attacker was? Is this like your hero? <laughs> now? We've been discussing it at school since we heard the news. Do you think it was just a coincidence or was the attacker after those two from the beginning? I wish I, if that were the case, I probably would have done a better job. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, don't be afraid to be wrong. Come on, what do you think? Was the attacker just another criminal? Or was it a vigilante? A vigilante? No, that is an interesting take on the matter. Well, I think you were pretty much trying to be a vigilante for the most part. But you're also a criminal at the same time. <laughs> Well, I'm not saying the case that of a vigilante criminal. I mean, I mean, he's a criminal before he even took on the ideal of a, maybe be a vigilante there. I don't regret my actions, not in the slightest. But, well, I don't feel bad about what I did. I can't bring myself to feel particularly good about it either. Well, the branding of a vigilante, however. When people think of my actions as those of a vigilante, then isn't that confirmation that others see my actions as justified? I think some people would feel your actions as justified. 
you know, in a way, I kind of do, in, and at the same time, it's kind of a, it would, it would have to have a, a good conversation to come to a conclusion. Do you deserve to be punished? Me, I, punishment probably would be in the case, nonetheless you would get punished, but I don't think you would deserve um, if you were found out for that, but not your previous one. Just Let's just put it in the occasion of just that. I don't think you would deserve like life in prison or any of that stuff for killing them. That's my opinion, because... But then again, I know your other sides. If I didn't know your other side of you, that you did kill someone before. <laughs> but we know something more about you than that. Just if we knew only that you did that, not the, the other stuff. Then I would be in the conclusion that, you know, you don't deserve life in prison. But punishment, nonetheless, might need to be the case. Well, they did find... Well, they didn't find any fingerprints or anything, right? I mean, if the attack was spontaneous, chances are they would have been caught. I really don't think it was just a random criminal. Sarah mulled over my argument for a second before nodding her head in agreement. As expected of my brother, he arrived at the same conclusion I did. Phew, glad to hear it. Sometimes I'm really not sure whether or not I subscribe to the same reason and logic as everybody else, so it's nice to get confirmation that my conclusion made sense. With that being said, what do you think about... Come in. Good evening. Ah, good evening, Sai. Wait, it's evening already? Ah, you should really go outside once in a while, you know? And ruin my perfect complexion? Moving along, I have information I think you should hear. Have you been watching or reading the news at all? The news? Why would I do that? Half of it is fabricated and the rest is just plain boring. Usually I'd agree with you, but today, hmm, what is it? Let's just say I have my eyes on someone who I think would be perfect for our upcoming operation. Oh shit, that's him. Maybe they'll figure out it's him, dude. They're probably after him, they're gonna have him go kill some fucker. So, well, I mean, not some fucker, but some, someone else. I yes, Sarah fascinated with the vigilante, and large, deep, and, and our discussion spanned a greater portion of our night than anticipated. Sarah and I soon found ourselves eating dinner while watching a news recap of the very event we've been discussing. But as Sarah remained glued to the television, what intrigued me more than the tales of my violent morning was Sarah's enthusiasm and her uncharacteristic stance in regards to what had happened. I'd initially been worried that my actions, my violent degradation, would inevitably really drive us apart should I be exposed. I thought that the sight of me covered in a stranger's blood would sicken my sister, maybe even prompt her to call the police. Um, I think it's a matter of of situation at hand. There, there's got to be. I think she probably still would be a little freaked out if she just saw you with blood all over you, a stranger's blood, and uh, a dead person next to you. I think anyone would be, uh, most logical people would be like, okay, what the hell's going on here? But if it was a different case, like she was being attacked or someone else was being attacked and you did it, I think that would be a whole different situation. Someone wouldn't be thinking as um, wrongfully of you for having the blood on you and the body being next to you. It's all about situation at hand and what was noticed by the other person. There's a better phrase than situating it, than, than, than saying it as that. I can't, you can't think of what, what I would put it as. However, as Saring unknowingly heard of my exploits, she wholeheartedly agreed with what I did. She happily regaled me with the baseless rumors she had heard at school, her own theories on the matter, and without a doubt made dinner for more lively than usual. Despite the morbid topic, Arnett was as happy as, and as peaceful as possible, right up until the moment when she brought up the witness. But I found some solace in the fact that police weren't knocking on our door, I wasn't naive enough to believe that they'd have no leads whatsoever. Between the DNA I left at the scene, and that girl being in police custody, they aren't going to just drop the investigation. And yet, with such things now out of my control, all I can do is wait. That's pretty much it, man. All you gotta do is wait and hope that nothing happens. As Sarah and I prepared to go to sleep, I asked her a question. Say, Sarah, you know the witness from school, right? Nods. Do you think you can get any more information from her? Uh, what did you think I was planning on doing? Oh, she was gonna ask her anyways? Put a little smirk on her face. There's no way I could leave this alone that easily. 
I should have known. Finally, ready to accept my reward for a day full of hardship, I laid down without another word. No matter how exhausted I am or how conflicted I feel, there's nothing a good night's rest can't cure. Don't worry, I'll keep you posted. Sarah navigated her way from the light switch to our bed, soon snuggling up to her idolized vigilante. Sweet dreams. I... That was an eventful chapter, chapter 4 was. Very... I would put it. <laughs> Damn, how much does this demo have? Holy frick. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> this demo has a lot more content than I thought it would. I, I'm liking this uh, visual novel, though. I, I, this is a visual novel I'm actually liking. I'm glad I actually started the demo. I'll be like, shit, man. When this demo finishes, I'm like, I want to see the freaking rest of it. <laughs> well, guys, I'm going to end it off here. That was quite the eventful chapter. I really liked it, and I'm liking this visual novel. It, it's not all lovey-dovey, you know, per se, you know. You, you could say there is a relationship, a brotherly-sisterly love with the two, our two main characters overall, but... I'm liking the way it's rolling, and, and I like that the the uh, the writers were not afraid to put violence, and crazy shit, and murder, or even rape in their in their story. I, I think more people should be willing to approach those aspects of bad things happening and not being afraid to throw those in there as a way of progressing the story, of course. Of course, they didn't go that far into it. It's not like they actually got she got raped, but. Just the, the idea. I enjoy that. Uh, not afraid of putting stuff that people will find emotional and that type of stuff in there. I like that. Alright guys, I want to thank you all for watching this. Hopefully you liked it. I, I'm enjoying it, as I said. <laughs> I will have a link to where you can check out this demo if you want to check it out yourself in the description box. I will also have a link, link in the description box where you can check out my stuff if you want to check that out. Again, guys, I want to thank you for watching this, and you all have a good day.